Hey everybody, Ted from Mob Rules. So we have something of a little bit of a shakeup. Uh, instead of doing like a model review kit, I'm gonna do something of a painting review uh, series. So it's kind of something uh, it, it, like a tutorial somewhat. Um, so one of our people over in our local uh, Facebook group uh, was talking about, uh, or, or saw some of the images that I did of the Imperial Sector car. I was working on uh, trying to give him like a rundown, rusty look, and he saw that I did the hairspray technique and was asked how to do it. So um, this is kind of an example of uh, the hairspray technique on one of the cars. Um, let's see, yeah, that's about right that. And then we also have another one right here uh, that I'd done. And so he was wondering how you do all those chipping and everything. And you know, the, one of the cool things about the hairspray technique is uh, the chipping looks like real chipping because it's actual chipping. <laughs> so, so that's kind of like the utility of it. Um, it's kind of like a nice way of like faking it. Um, now there's other ways to do it. You don't have to necessarily use hairspray. Uh, you could also use a chipping medium. Um, some people use salt, uh, but we're gonna do hairspray because it's a hell of a lot cheaper than chipping fluid. So, um, so what we're gonna do, I took this guy right here uh, it's all primed up as you can see, um, and we're going to uh, just kind of go from square one, uh, square two, because it's already primed. So anyway, let's take a look. All right, so now what we're going to do uh, with this guy is we're going to do the rust color. So um, this is the, the underpainting in art, we call it the underpainting. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, then afterwards, uh, we're going to go ahead and put the, we're going to clear coat it. Um, that way the rust stays solid. Um, and then after that, we're gonna put our uh, hairspray, and then uh, after that, we'll do our base color, and so on. So, uh, so we're kind of doing everything in reverse. Normally, you would do an, uh, when you do rust, uh, people do an additive rust, so they add the rust on top of it, or they add the chipping. Um, but this is subtractive, so we're gonna be subtracting from the base color in order to get to the underlying rust. Does that make sense? So it's it's uh, it's a little bit more realistic in that. Um, you know, like I said, we're chipping paint, so we're getting to the underlying metal of it, except this is not metal, it's just gonna be a rust color. So, um, so the first thing we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna airbrush on some brown. Um, in this case, I usually like to do mahogany uh, from Vallejo. Um, I saw another person that did burnt umber, and actually I really like the burnt umber look. Uh, it has a little bit more red to it, and it's a little bit lighter. This is a bit darker than, than that, so, um, Unfortunately, our local shop that supplies it is out. <laughs> Being in Alaska, uh, they don't like to ship things during the winter time because they freeze up and then it just ruins the paint. Uh, so I have to wait a, a few more weeks before they get their next shipment in. Um, anyway, so yeah, I'll do mahogany, some sort of brown, um, and we're gonna go on top of that and get some more texture. So that's not the end product. That's not the end rust color. So, uh, all right. First off, I'm just gonna say that you're probably gonna see me using this entry-level Pache. <laughs> the reason is, is because it's a total tank. Uh, so when I do like a lot of my base colors or larger models, uh, I love this thing simply because you really, um, yeah, I don't really care <laughs> if it gets ruined. So, you know, if I really wanna do a fine-tuned uh, airbrush, I'll, I'll get the Iowata out. So don't judge me <laughs> on my <laughs> airbrush. So, all right. So let's go ahead and put a little bit of a thin coat on there. This, yeah, I think I need to add a little bit more paint to it. Okay, so now that this is taken care of, um, I'm gonna go ahead and add uh, just a little bit of, actually, you know what? I think I might add a little bit of, uh, let's see, Keratop Red from uh, a Reaper. Um, so I'm just kind of looking for a light, just a little bit of a lighter color. Uh, this isn't an airbrush paint. Um, it's a, uh, just a regular ass paint. So we did add a lot of water before, so I'm not gonna bother adding too much water. However, I will mix it up. And so we are looking, we're gonna be looking for um, kind of like a variance in tone. Um, 
and a little bit in color. So we don't want it to be, you know, when everything's scratched up, we don't want it to be uniform. Um, we want there to be splotches and stuff. So we're, what we're gonna do, uh, now, real quick, this stage, um, and I should have prefaced this before, is, you know, I'm using an airbrush, however you can hand paint this. You don't have to do it with an airbrush. Um, later on, it will be highly beneficial to do it with an airbrush when you do the base coat, because you don't want too much paint. Um, if you do, then the chipping, it's gonna be a lot harder to get the paint off. Um, so another alternative might be to just do like a lot of really thin coats. So anyway, let's go ahead and try this. So something I like to do is uh, put your tip on, or put your finger on the tip if you, if you haven't done any airbrushing and just kind of mix it that way. Uh, then we'll go ahead and blow a little bit of color out until we see the color come out. Okay, that looks good. I just wasted a lot of paint, but... We're just going to be kind of splotchy with it. It's okay if it runs. So now um, I do want to get a little bit of dry brushing on this. So I'm going to give this just a moment to heal. So now I'm going to just do a little bit of a dry brush and some stippling on this guy. Um, I'm using kind of a terracotta uh, color. It's just, you know, generic uh, you know, uh, paint that you can get at a, a craft store. So and that's okay. It's, you know, each, I think a lot, like a lot of brands have uh, decent colors. Just a matter of finding the one you like. Um, from the brand, so just kind of put it on a little bit randomly. Um, I, I, I I just found that that the previous color that I did that uh, that light brown, uh, or I'm sorry, that that carrot top wasn't that exciting. You can barely see it. So um, I, I think in the future I'd probably mix it up a little bit more, uh, or rather put a little bit more the, uh, carrot top in there. And so let's just change the ratio up a little bit. Okay. Once again, we're doing this kind of randomly. We just want a little bit of texture to show through when we um, when we paint it, when we chip rather. So, and the thing is, like, even though this kind of just looks like <laughs> this looks like some technique that your mom would probably do on her bathroom uh, when you know she's trying to get that pseudo Adobe look. <laughs> That was really popular in the the mid, the turn of the millennia, but that's okay because we're not really going to see a lot of that. So there we go. All right. So there you go. What do you think? Is that going to work? Does it look like rust? Not really. Not just yet. <laughs> Where we're getting there. So the next step is going to be to use a sealer. Um, I like purity seal. Uh, it's something that's kind of satin. You don't want it to be too gloss. If it's if it's a matte seal, it's gonna be really hard to. Um, uh, actually, that's just what I prefer. I don't even know if there is a big difference. <laughs> all right, so we have our our truck. It's all clear coated, uh, looking good. We have a little bit of texture in there. Uh, we don't need too much, but you know we're we're still gonna go in later and uh, touch it up. Um, so next is going to be the hairspray. Um, so what you're kind of want to need is uh, um, something that's unscented. Uh, you don't want any extra additives in there, um, and uh, just keep it simple. I mean, I think this cost me a little over a dollar. So, uh, oh, I do see it has some sunscreen in there. I could probably do without that, um, but I haven't had a problem with this one. The three-in-one. <laughs> Here I am giving you beauty tips, um, but anyway, the three-in-one seemed to do pretty good, and it was hella cheap. Um, so go ahead and let's pop that open. Um, I did have one bottle that ended up um, with an issue. So I, I, I cut it open, put it in a Tupperware uh, so I could use it through my, my airbrush. That's an option. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna spray it just right on the guy. So 
and I'm going to do like a healthy dose. I mean, you can practice with um, how much you want. You know, it, you might want um, a really light chip effect that you have to put a lot of effort into. Um, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm liking a little extra. So part of the thing with this is that when you are done, uh, you really want it to dry for as long as possible. Um, you don't want to just jump right in there when it looks like it's kind of set up. But I would probably, you know, do this before you go to bed uh, and then just let it sit for a few hours. Uh, that that probably be best because otherwise what will happen is you're going to put your your paint over it and it's going to start to um, to bind with the uh, the hairspray a little bit and then when you take it off it's almost going to it's not going to take it off cleanly or the paint it's not going to the paint isn't going to come off cleanly it's going to kind of come off in um, kind of just like a smear almost so the longer it sets up the better you are also with your paint you're going to want it to set up as well so let's give this a little bit of time and come back to it okay so it's all dried now um and it's ready for the first layer um we're going to start with the uh um the shadows so we're going to go ahead and what i usually like to do i know some people do the uh, zenithal so they just kind of hit it with black and then hit it with white and then do your color on top of that and that's fine um the way i usually like to do it is work from dark to light um so what i did is i want this to be a really faded, um, a faded uh, red, and so I mixed up a little bit of red with a little bit of gray just to kind of dirty it up because I don't want it to be perfect. I mean, this thing is going to be has been sitting in the sun for a long time, and the the colors have been baked. So uh, we're going to go ahead and hit that, and you know, it's the the color is to your choosing. Um, you know, it's, it's it's however you want your car to look. Um, so I'm not going to bother showing you the ratios on this. But I just want it to look a little dingy. Um, unfortunately, as I'm going through, I'm realizing that this color is not too dissimilar from what we put on before. So, uh, so it's going to take a couple layers to really drive home the the rust look um, and the uh, the proper fading. So, and once again, this is with the um, with the pache. I have the larger tip on it, so. It, I think once I get this layer on it, I might just switch to a smaller tip so I can get a little bit more precision. But I think that is okay. Just get the top real quick. I'm contemplating whether or not to just change the color of the of the Aquila up there, the not Aquila. <laughs> so, um, all right. So I'm gonna change I'm gonna change tips real quick, and then we'll uh, get our um, you know what? No, I'm not going to. Okay, so I've mixed up a little bit of a pink. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of what happens with brown, uh, red as it gets sun bleached. So, I'll go ahead and put that on. Alright. Now, I know white is, white can be kind of granular as it comes out. So, this is, I was hoping to get one that didn't have too much grain. Actually, this one doesn't look too bad. And I'm hitting it from the top down. That way we maintain some shadows. So this is kind of where our zenithal highlighting comes in. All right, oops. Don't worry, it looks a little pink right now, but it won't by the time it's done. So now I'm going to give this a second, empty this out, add a little bit more. I'm going to add a ton of white to this. So it's, it's, this thing's going to be damn near white by the time it's done. So, okay. And there is our almost white. Um, I think it's good. I, I think, I think I'm happy with that. So, uh, now we'll just kind of leave it and let it completely cure. Um, actually, ooh, let me touch that up real quick okay we're gonna let it completely cure um, and then we'll go ahead and chip it so here we are um, we are ready for the the scrubbings uh, sometimes this is kind of a crapshoot uh, you know sometimes there's just like a pocket full of um, hairspray uh, and it's just like ruined your day uh, other times it's perfect so all right so you guys ready all right, so first thing I'm going to do, get a little bit of uh, water on the brush. 
Um, and then can I come in there? And let's see. Oh, got a little bit coming off on the corners. I can kind of tell ahead of time that that was going to be a good spot. It was um, looked like the paint was having a little bit of a reaction to the hairspray. Kind of bubbling up. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, that's the good stuff. Um, yeah, I've heard some people will go and uh, just put the water on the brush. Others will drench it underneath the sink. Um, I kind of do a little bit of both. Depends on how things feel. Yeah, I want the top to be nice and weathered. Yeah. Uh, another technique you can use, uh, some people will just kind of hit, hit it like that. I think I saw Justin from Secret War Miniatures was doing that. He is amazing. Um, but it looks like this brush might not be stiff enough. It is a pretty old brush. There we go. Might be getting a little bit too much water on there. So that's kind of one of the problems is uh, you can saturate it a little bit too much. And when you do that, like it just comes off in chunks as you're kind of seeing it happen already. So I'm gonna go ahead and ease back a little bit on the, the water. There we go. I think we're just about done. And that's actually, uh, I think, one of the nice things about if you just, um, you know, I'm putting a lot of water on here, and it's coming off real quick. Um, but if you didn't, if you just wet your brush just a little bit, instead of saturating it like I am, um, is that uh, you have a little bit more control. I'm actually losing control pretty quickly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you can get in there with a toothbrush or a toothpick, I'm sorry, with a toothpick, uh, and get some individual scratches. Um, sorry about that, I was off camera a little bit, as I do. Um, this actually has some little, little teethy bits there, so you can kind of get in there and kind of scratch things. Um, but yeah, that's kind of about it. Uh, let's let this guy dry off and we'll get a closer look. Uh, we have the finished truck. Well, it's not finished finished, but... Um, we do have all the, uh, uh, the appropriate amount of rust. Um, so, you know, what we'll do after this is I'll probably, uh, I'm, I will definitely be doing some rust streaks, uh, try to get some, some washes on there. Um, maybe I'll pick out some details. Um, I'll get the tires and, and everything else. You know, I'll do something with the, uh, the windows probably make them look like they're cracked or something. Um, and then I'll do, maybe along the edges, I'll try to scratch it up a little bit more, uh, get some some metal sc uh, scuffs in there. Uh, so it looks as though there is some fresh damage as well. And then do some powders uh, and that, that'll be it. So once again, here are some other cars that are in the, about the same process. So we'll take that and uh, Add a little bit something else to it. Uh, definitely do some more washes and uh, powders. And let's see, this is another one. Working on the same spot. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything that's like completely finished, but I do have some other things that I've kind of used the same technique with. Um, this was kind of using, you know, we had like the one color and then it masked off and did the white. Uh, and then just go and hit that as well. Um, I'll go in and get some details and stuff because it is a little bit of a little bit furry around the edges, a little fuzzy. Uh, so we'll crispen that up uh, as well. So um, I really like how that turned out. Also, here's some more Shadow War stuff. I think the Shadow War set looks really good, kind of pocked and uh, uh, rusted. So you know, definitely hit this with some some streaks. Um, and then finally, here was an orc truck that I'm kind of working on. This one's another good example of, um, 
you know, hitting it with different colors. So you mask off to the yellow after doing that cream color, hit the white uh, and the orange and do like a two-tone kind of orange. So it looks like it's a little bit faded on the top. Um, and then, you know, of course, go back, hit the white again. Then after that's all done with, you know, just as I've been saying, I hit it with other colors. So yeah, this one's kind of cool. I have to open it. <laughs> Uh, but I don't know. It's, it's a really fun technique. I have a blast doing it. Uh, it looks really good when it's all done. Uh, and when you get like all the pigments, you get all the, the, the washes of the streaks. Um, it really kind of brings it to life. I mean, cause it's, it already looks realistic. Like it's a real chip mark, you know, it's not like a, a painted on chip mark that looks a little bit too deliberate. So anyway, uh, give it a shot. Remember, um, you, it is imperative that once you're done uh, painting the rust, you clear coat it before you put on the hairspray. So definitely do that. And uh, yeah, have fun guys. All right, so real quick, I wanted to do a quick shout out. Uh, thanks a lot for everybody who's been supporting us uh, and watching the channel and all those comments. Um, I've really had a good time like interacting with all of you, uh, especially Richard. You know, it's been really cool. Like it's it's like clockwork every time we post a video. Like it's fun to talk to you. Um, and like a lot of the other guys, Tyler, um, the uh, the wargaming Viking. You know, just like uh, let's see, the nerd. Uh, it's 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 really awesome. So thanks a lot for that. Also, this is my first tutorial, so if you get a chance, um, give me some feedback. You know, what works, what doesn't, what would you like to see? Are there some techniques that you'd like to see me try? <laughs> so um, I'm definitely open to this. This was a lot of fun. I definitely feel like there's some parts where I can improve, um, you know, just paying attention to my viewfinder. <laughs> so I hope you learned a lot. If there, you have any more questions, let me know. Uh, go ahead and leave comments. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll definitely be responding. So thank you so much. Uh, definitely make sure to take a look at our, uh, podcast mob rules and wander on over to the Facebook page where there's more discussion. So thanks a lot.